This is the Brett Snodgrass Podcast. Thank you guys for joining me today. I got an amazing friend and guest on the show with me, Pete Walkie from Orange Coaching. Uh, but right now, I want you guys to go over to YouTube and subscribe to the Brett Snodgrass channel. Leave a comment in the comments section. And I love the replying to comments, so I'll get that as soon as I can. Uh, send me some questions, guys. What do you guys want to learn about? Is there any certain guests that you want to have on this show? Please email me uh, or leave a comment on the YouTube channel. And uh, we'll, we'll try to get that guest for you guys. Today, I got Pete Walkie. He's with Orange Coaching. I hired Pete about five months ago. He has been coaching me up in life. And today, he talks about the five storms of life. And so, he's going to dig into the biggest problems that every man and business leader faces. Uh, He also has been niching down and focusing into saving business leaders' marriages. So, if you're struggling with your marriage or it's just, yeah, so so mediocre and you want it to be better, uh, this is the one to listen to. To for you guys today. So I want to introduce you guys now with Orange Coaching, Pete Walkie. How you doing, Brett? Good to, good to see you. You too, man. Uh, it's been quite a ride. I know we've been working together on the coaching front. You've been coaching me up and uh, making, helping me make some big decisions in my life. And just super excited for you to be on this podcast. Share your wisdom. Uh, you got 29 years in the finance industry, advising entrepreneurs, business leaders from all walks of life. And uh, you've been helping people not only with their finances, but with these other areas of life too, like marriage, health. And uh, you're getting ready to do an Ironman this year. So so that that's amazing. <laughs> so we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. I always ask this first question though, and that is this: is this is a deep one? Who is Pete Walkie? Good question. I'm a family guy, author, speaker, business owner, athlete. Love to be a father, and uh, yeah, I just uh, I believe I was put on this planet to uh, encourage people and help them take a step closer to God. So. Doesn't sound so exciting, but uh, that's who I am. No, man, that is that is what yeah. it's all about, getting close intimacy with the Father, getting to His heart, and uh, you do that well. And uh, you're such an encouraging person, and um, I know that I've been extremely encouraged by you and your example in your life, and I love to just bounce ideas. Uh, just speaking, you just have this coach's heart. I think it kind of dates back that your dad was a coach, my dad was a coach. So so take yeah. us take us into this world of coaching because a lot of times when we say coach we think of athletics right but but yeah, you're really yeah. helping coach people up in different areas so take us what why did you decide to go down this coaching road well that's a good question i think i grew up in a in a coach's house my dad was a teacher coach and athletic director and um, i was involved with sports as a kid through high school and through college and i just had some great experiences with with coaches with mentors with um with teams and I just, I just really love that. And the best coaches were the ones that really got to know you and they, they cared about you as a person first before your performance or before what you could do for the team. And I really think, you know, my dad was the same way. And I just, I've just fallen in love with the process. And I just, I just think about my clients and how, how can I get them from here to here? And we do a lot of non-traditional things and it just, that's just kind of how I'm wired. Yeah. Definitely. Is there a person or a mentor or a coach in your life that when you look back over your years, you're like, man, that that coach or mentor really impacted me? Yeah. Yeah. There was a guy named Eldon Kibbe um, out of Indianapolis, and he took me through a program called Operation Timothy. And the goal of the program was an older, wiser businessman and somebody that had a, a relationship with the, with the Lord for a lot longer takes a younger, uh, less mature guy through that. And we met once a week for about a year and a half. And we just had conversations about life, about my business uh, and about God. And he really had a huge impact on me. What a, what a great gentleman. And his story was he lost three kids that were really small. And uh, if you would meet him, you would think he's the most humble, gentle person Never would have guessed he went through these three tragedies uh, and just a, just a really wise and uh, a peaceful man. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's amazing. I've heard about Operation Timothy and uh, Mm -hmm. such such a great thing. And uh, have you done the other side of that? I have, I have. And I found that uh, I grow the most when I'm mentoring people and I have a mentor myself. Mm -hmm. So part of this Ironman thing is I'm working with a coach. I'm learning from a coach. 
And then in the business, I'm coaching other people. So I found that when you have, when you're mentoring people and you're getting mentored at the same time, that's when I feel, and that's when people grow the most really. Yeah, definitely. So I want to like take you into maybe a coaching session with you. Uh, like, what is that experience like? I were to hire you as a coach, which I have, but so I know, <laughs> but tell our audience, what is that experience like? I hire Pete Walkie, Orange Coaching. Yeah. So what do, you, what do we do? So we start off with a conversation just to get to know who you are and what you're all about uh, and where you're trying to get to. And I try to get to the heart of a person, what motivates them, what excites them. And I ask questions around the five storms of life, which is business, money, marriage, health, and family. And then we go from there. And my experience growing up, I've, I've been to lots of counseling sessions. I believe everybody needs a good counselor or a good therapist. The goofy part about that is they only last about 45 to 50 minutes. And it seems like if you're meeting with them over and over, you spend the first 15 minutes kind of catching up. So with Orange Coaching, we plan out 90 minute time slots on a regular basis, whether somebody wants it once a month, once every two weeks or once a week. And we just have space for conversations. And so rarely do business owners have a place that they can go and be 100% totally honest and transparent because it's, it's kind of lonely at the top. So um, we, just, we just talk. We talk about what's going on in their lives, what things are bothering them, what big decisions they have coming up. And uh, partly I'm a sounding board, partly I'm a coach. And uh, I'm, I've learned to be quiet and listen and let guys talk. And then we just go from there. Yeah, I would totally agree. A lot of times the first 20 minutes, 25 minutes, yeah. you're just kind of getting a feel of each other, getting into the groove, asking a couple of questions. And then, yeah. you know, by the time you get to the good stuff, you're, you're 30, 40 minutes in. <laughs> yeah. My experience is, is that right when you get into a good conversation and in, in traditional therapy or counseling, it's time to go. Yeah. So we really feel like that 90 minutes is a, is a good spot. Yeah, definitely. So you talk about these five storms of life, which are, what would you say? Business, money, health, marriage, marriage health, and family. And yeah. family. Okay. So take us into that a little bit. Like, um, uh, those are some, someone that's coming to you. Is there like one that's more common uh, that they, that these business leaders, these entrepreneurs are struggling with? Um, you know, this is like that first conversation. What are they struggling with? Because some guys maybe have all the money that they need, yeah. but their marriage is suffering or their health mm -hmm. or whatever. So, uh, where did you kind of come up with these these storms of life? So during my time with Eldon Kibbe, he said, if you ever want to talk to somebody about God, you just ask them um, what kinds of things are bothering them. And he said, typically men are struggling with or experiencing stress in one of these five storms of life. It's either their work, their money, their marriage, their health and their family. And my experience, I've, I've spoken to hundreds of audiences and not one person has come up to say, you know what? I liked what you had to say, but I'm not struggling with any of those things. Mm. So what I found is that men are struggling or having stress in at least one of those areas. Sometimes they're getting bombarded three or four or even five of those areas. But um, we can just ask some questions and, and really get below the surface because sometimes people don't think they, they have a lot of stress in an area um, because they've experienced the stress for so long. It's just kind of in the background. Yeah. Uh, they're just so, kind of numb yeah. to it. I I feel yeah. it's just like oh that's just normal. Like everybody, yeah. it's just what what yeah. we deal with, right? Exactly, um, exactly. And so everything's holistic. So the nice thing about what we do is that we can touch on different areas. You don't have to hire an expert in in five different areas. Go to five different appointments each week because it's holistic. It's all kind of wrapped in together. So uh, the feedback from clients is we really like the ability to just bounce from one topic to the next and it's it's really efficient yeah yeah is there um so these these business leaders and sometimes these storms of life affect other areas too right obviously if if your finances you're crazy stressed about your money it could yeah. affect your marriage too so exactly <laughs> and then exactly do you find that is again, it's just like taking that step closer to God. We talked about operation Timothy and that's, that's kind of the goal is getting that intimate relationship with God. That obviously helps all these areas as well. Is that, is that what you're finding out? Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel like for, for men, there are two very important questions. The two most important questions are, 
Am I going to follow Jesus? Am I going to have a relationship with God? And number two, selecting your wife. I feel like those are the two most important decisions a man can make. And so a lot of times we'll spend quite a bit of time on on those two topics. Mm, interesting. So th- those are very interesting questions. This kind of takes me in. You've kind of had this niche now where, uh, again, a lot of times a business owner or an entrepreneur will hire a coach to help them with their business, help them grow their business, scale their business. But you've actually niched it down to where you're helping men with their marriages now, which was that second question, choosing your wife. And yeah. so so take us into that. Like this is something that you've gone down so mm-hmm. why why that topic? Well, it's interesting because I was married for 20 years, raised three beautiful girls. And after about three years of marriage counseling and three years of going to counseling myself, unfortunately, our marriage ended and we, we gave it a great run. It just didn't work out. And it was very painful uh, because I'm a family guy. Um, you know, I always identify as a husband and father. And uh, that was kind of my my thing. And so I experienced a great deal of pain and I don't want men to experience that. I, mm. you know, I don't know about you, but I learned more from my mistakes and things that I, you know, failed at than the successes. And so I really would just want to turn a negative into a positive. And what the feedback from, from guys are is I really appreciate it. You've been there. You've been where I am right now. And uh, you, you understand what I'm going through. So mm. Um, and, and when you're dealing with entrepreneurs, they're usually really good at business, but then the relationship side tends to lag. And that most important relationship uh, with their wife tends to tends to, to, to lag a little bit. You know, here in, in the United States, everything is kid focused and kid centric. So I don't know about you, but we raised our, our kids. They were active in sports. They had other activities. And eventually everything gets focused on the kids and the schedules and going here and there. And you can wake up 10, 20 years later and you don't really know your wife because you've been so focused on travel sports or getting them into all these activities. And so I have a whole new view of of kind of that travel sport thing uh, growing up. I was a college athlete and I just assumed the kids were going to be athletes and that's how we raised them. And when you get going and every weekend is planned around kids activities, it, it, it kind of wears everybody out. Yeah. Yeah. And I've noticed that too. I mean, even with us, uh, so I have a teenage daughter, she already turned 15. My other kids are pretty young. We haven't gotten quite into the travel sports yet, but I just signed up to coach basketball. I'm coaching both of my first grade and my kindergarten in basketball right now. And there it's, you on, go. it's on Saturday. It's only six weeks, but I'm feeling a little bit, wow, this is, this is yeah. a little bit. And, um, it's every weekend, right? So it really just shoots lots of stuff, your vacations, your time, anything spontaneous. And uh, so I wanted to just ask you, what is your view now on raising kids and these travel sports? You said maybe it has changed. Yeah. So take us in that a little bit. So I'm 51 years old. When we were kids, uh, travel sports weren't huge. And I played baseball, so we'd have American Legion ball. It was kind of like an all-star team after your high school season was over. But there wasn't a lot of travel from state to state. And now today it feels like to get into these good high school programs, they really want to start you at age five, six, or seven to get on these club sports. And it really just becomes an idol in people's lives. And so my background was my Uh, grandfather played basketball at Purdue. My uncle played basketball at Ohio State. My dad played at Ball State. And sports was our idol. Sports was the thing. You know, growing up, I didn't go to church. And it was because we had sports on Sundays. Mm. And, you know, I look at that and I kind of started down that path. And if I could do it all over again, you know, it would be God first, uh, then my wife, then the kids, and then the activities would kind of fill in there. And, Mm. In the United States, we kind of get it upside down uh, and and it it's not good sometimes. So if I would do it all over again, I think the kids would play sports, um, maybe not travel because what one percent of kids actually get a, a college scholarship and, you know, a, a very small fraction of that going to play pro sports. So is it worth sacrificing your family for the possibility of something like that happen? Mm, yeah. So I guess, yeah. No, that is uh, 
No, that is, that is very, very true. And it's funny because I, I, I grew up, my dad was a high school basketball coach. I was the same way. We didn't have the travel as much, but we had AAU and it was a limited, um, you know, what, what the view of AAU is today. We did, we did do some of that, but my goal was to get a college scholarship, which I did and I got it paid for, but but it's funny, like I spent so much time, so much energy, so much focus on to, to get the college, to get that paid for. Uh, but if I would have taken my energy and focus and built a small business, like I could have done some of that same, same things too, right? So you talk about kind of the family, like the storms of life. You talk about family and marriage. And you say mm-hmm. like we're, we live in a kid-centric, kid-focused uh, culture. And sometimes the marriage uh, lacks. So kind of take us into marriage versus family is it all the same thing like you have they're kind of separate in your storms of life but take us into what does a what does a good marriage uh do to to the to the rest of the family so you really kind of have to take a step back and say okay um a good home has a good strong leader and i believe god put the men on the planet to be good leaders of their homes so Um, a gentleman needs to have a good relationship with God to have a real strong sense of direction, sense of purpose. And then he would in turn lead the family kind of like in a, in a coaching situation where you've, you've played for lots of coaches and teams. And sometimes you've had strong coaches. Sometimes you've had weak coaches going into questions that I typically ask gentlemen is, do you see marriage as a partnership where you're both equal Or do you see it as a head coach, assistant coach type of situation? And so a lot of times I can identify some problems that that guys are having in their relationship because of that. So Mm -hmm. it's a relationship with God, a relationship with your wife, then a relationship with your kids. So the kids need to know that mom comes before the kids. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's God first, then your wife, then your kids. And if you have that in balance, things tend to go very, very smoothly. If you have that out of balance, like if, if kids can draw, bring a wedge in between mom and dad, and then uh, uh, we're, we're taking sides, that can cause issues. Mm. If, uh, if the husband doesn't have a strong relationship with God, then maybe he's looking to the world to give him the direction or the purpose of, of the family. So it's, it's about purpose. It's about having your relationships in the right priority. Mm. No, I love that. Um, so we talked a little bit about business owners, entrepreneurs, obviously we have a lot of listeners that are business owners, real estate investors, entrepreneurs. And what I've seen too, is we get so focused on performance achievements, scaling our business, providing, Mm -hmm. you know, that's the word that we like to use. We we're providing for our family. So this is all for our family. Our why is why are we doing this is for our family, but sometimes we sacrifice our family for our family. I don't know. <laughs> so, but, but that's what I've it's seen. Not intentional. Right. It's not intentional. I mean, right. yeah. Entrepreneurs have an amazing skill to, to build and grow businesses and to make money. And it's a, it's an amazing skill. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you, would you say that, uh, someone that's leading a business, leading a team, uh, it, did they have a more difficult time with the relational part, with the family part, with the marriage part, than someone who, goes and you know clocks in at nine clocks out at five comes home and don't doesn't have to think about work it's it's a leaves it all there so do you think it's harder yeah i do because entrepreneurs are balancing so many things and and there there's so much responsibility on an entrepreneur's shoulders that that the average person doesn't understand and you know you're thinking about your business 24 7 you're thinking about during downturns, making sure everybody gets paychecks. And you, you really, a good servant leader type of business owner um, really sacrifices himself really for the good of the business. Mm. And um, yeah, so that's, that, that's what we see. Yeah, definitely. Wearing so many hats. And like I said, it's just um, guys like, like us sometimes feel stuck. Our wheels are always spinning and it's just hard. It's just a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. And we just internalize most of it. We don't let it out unless we talk higher orange coaching. Maybe we'll talk to you a little bit about it, but that's the only person we talk to, right? <laughs> yeah. Typically guys don't share stuff with other people. They'll, they'll share a segment of their life with different people, like a golfing buddy or a, a weightlifting friend. Um, and, and guys can be very compartmental and what, 
what really brings a lot of peace to them is when they can share everything and be transparent. And, you know, I've made so many mistakes in my life. Uh, people can judge me. Okay. But when people come and they share their stuff with me uh, or with orange coaching, it's just, there's no judgment. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, guys have shared many, many crazy things with me and it just, it just is what it is. I just see their soul. We're all children of God and God loves us unconditionally. And who am I to judge? Mm. So uh, my job is to be alongside them and to help them navigate these five storms and, and, you know, think through these two most important questions. And, and really what we're trying to get to is more peace, joy, and fulfillment in their lives. And, a lot of times entrepreneurs will try to get that peace, that joy, and that fulfillment through uh, maybe a bank account or hiring so many employees, or sometimes we, we, we make our kids an idol. And so we, we live vicariously through them, or maybe health becomes an idol. And, you know, we're pursuing that, that 5% body fat, mm. um, but really our peace, joy, and fulfillment comes from our rock solid foundation of relationships. Yeah. First with God, then our wives, then our kids, then everybody else. And so we we go through an assessment right off the bat with people to help them see what level of peace, joy, and fulfillment they're experiencing based on the strength of their top 10 most important relationships. So mm. uh, there's a huge correlation with that. Yeah. And you're an author of a book that you've brought up in our coaching sessions, The Lighthouse Leadership Principle, right? And that's something yeah. Yeah. people can get, right? Uh to your book and this kind of go, dives into that right to relationships the top 10 and we've we've gone through that a little bit so yeah yeah and so i i really take men uh through orange coaching or through the save your marriage program through those lighthouse leadership principles and everything you know we have to build our life on a rock solid foundation and you know my first thing that i do with men is try to identify what they built their life on mm. and if it's not on god if it's not on relationships it's really built on the sand and yeah. you and i both know that when the storms come um and there's wind and there's waves and there's lightning and thunder if you're built on the sand you can get knocked over pretty easily but if you're built on the rock you stand up to those uh storms of life a lot better yeah no, definitely. Uh, so I want to ask you this real quick in that there's a lot of marriage resources out there, right? There's couples counseling, which you mentioned, there's books on marriage, there's courses mm -hmm. and just things like that. So with you, like why would someone maybe come to Orange Coaching, Save Your Marriage? Uh, why would somebody come to you rather than go to maybe a, let's get some counseling together? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. So a lot of what we do in the Save Your Marriage program is really just a, a boot camp. It's a, it's a short course on becoming a lighthouse leader in your home, in your business, in your marriage. And we really condense about two years worth of work with a counselor into an eight-week program. So if men are willing to roll up their sleeves and really focus on their marriage for eight weeks, typically you can turn any situation around. Mm -hmm. And we only work with the men. We don't need to work with the women um, because most of the time with the leadership changes and the, and the leader, the leader's heart changes, um, the, the wife responds to that. Mm. So that's why uh, that's why we work on the men. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. Where can someone get some information about that? What I'm going to do for your group, uh, Brett, is I'm going to just give you my phone number, 317-727-5518. And if they will text me, Brett is awesome. I will give them <laughs> some special treatment and a, and a really nice discount. Um, and that's, they can just text me and, yeah. and right off the bat, if they want to go to the calendar, it's uh, calendly.com forward slash save your marriage. And they can select a time. And what we'll do is just have a conversation to see if, if we can help you or not. And if we can't, I'll give you some ideas on what, what you can do next. If we can, we, uh, we talk about how we can work together. No, I think it's just so important guys. And just, we're going to put that in our show notes on the Brett Snodgrass YouTube channel on our description. So check that out. But just a couple of things I was listening to a podcast the other day, just about just kind of blurring the lines between your vocation and what you do versus your family. And like, 
really just kind of sitting in the, into that. And are you leading your family? Are you leading your wife? And just having like someone like Pete just to bounce ideas off of like it, sometimes it's just those small little things that change everything. And mm -hmm. so for an example, my wife and I had, we had a disagreement in our home and on the surface, someone says, oh, it's not that big a deal, but it was a bit really big deal to us. I wanted to go this direction with our family and she did not. And I remember Pete said to me, which I've used with other other men to this day to, when they're struggling a little bit, getting on the same page with their wife, Pete looked at me and he said, you know, um, I would rather be on the same page with my wife and fail than to be divided and succeed. And that really changed everything for me. So I took a step back, reflected on that, made that decision. And now our late, our relationship has flourished and I could take myself back. And what if I didn't do that? What if I said, you know what? I'm right. We're going this way, whether you like it or not. I think it could have been disastrous, right? Um, yeah. So anyways, thank you for that. So I just remember that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And believe it or not, I didn't, I didn't learn that from being successful. I learned it from making lots of mistakes. Right. And it's one of the things just passing it on to other guys to, you know, don't do what I did. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Pete. Um, I, one last question, just, we've talked about marriage. We've talked about coaching and I want to just ask you this real quick about accountability. And a lot of times entrepreneurs and business leaders, they're not accountable to anybody. And sometimes people are like, well, that's the way I like it. I don't want to be accountable <laughs> to anybody. But do you think that just part of the program, just having someone to be accountable to, uh, you know, to do the same, to do this things that they want to do to reach their goals, to if I'm going to work my marriage, to be accountable to someone, do you think that's like the main thing that this relationship is about, this coaching uh, student? Yeah, it's huge. Um, I think our natural tendency is to be lazy at times. And if we don't have anything or anybody to be accountable for or to, I think we, we tend to, to slack off or not follow through or something like that. So that's one of the reasons why I hire coaches myself is to hold me accountable. And here's where I am. Here's where I want to get to. And here's our plan. And by them holding me accountable, that's, that, that, so that's about half the battle. Mm. If, if you can find somebody to hold you accountable and that you can be a hundred percent transparent with and honest with, and, and allow them to ask you the hard questions, that's, that's half the battle. Yeah. No, I love that. That's awesome guys. So check out, uh, Pete orange coaching. You can text him if you're working on your marriage. I think it's just so important guys that if this is an area in e any of these storms of life, not just marriage, uh, contact Pete and, um, he'll set you guys up. So thanks Pete for, for just sharing your knowledge and wisdom today. I always like to end every podcast with a little fire round. So I've prepared <laughs> three questions for you today. So All here right. we go. Drum roll, Shoot. please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number one, your best book recently read. Okay. Best book. I'd say that would be the TB method, the Tom Brady method. The guy's an Iron Man. I don't know how he does it. So I read his book and figured out how he does it. And uh, if you want to get healthy and if you want to talk about um, living your best life physically and mentally, read that book. I actually listened to a lot of books on Audible and that's where I did changed my life. Mm. TB method. That's a Tom Brady method. Interesting. Yeah, he's he's yeah. definitely had a lot of success and uh, lives lives an awesome life. So I'm going to I'm going to get that. I always ask these questions for my own personal collection. So. <laughs> All right, number 2. Best piece of marriage advice just on the fly. Okay. Um, be humble. Be willing to be coachable and teachable whether it's to God or whether it's to uh, uh, friends and um and, and try to get a little bit better each day, each week. So if you can get 1% better per week, you're going to be quite a bit better um, over the course of a year. And so keep track of it. Um, but yeah, I have, be humble, be coachable, be teachable, and know that you're not doing everything 100% right. Um, and, you know, if you want that peace, joy, and fulfillment, that's where it starts. You, you've, got to, you've got to be able to, uh, to be coachable. Love that. Awesome. All right. Last one. See, since you were in the finance industry for 29 years, best financial advice. 
Okay, so uh, America is really good at living above our means. I think the average now people people spend 130 percent of their discretionary income. So uh, the best advice would be live below your means in a 10, 10, 80 format. Uh, give away the first 10, save the second 10, and live on 80 percent. Mm. Awesome, love that. That's awesome. That's great. You guys write that down. Focus on that uh, as we go forward here. So thank you so much, Pete Walkie, Orange Coaching. It's been awesome, man. Thank you for being on the show today. You bet. Great to see you, Brett. Thank you so much for checking out the Brett Snodgrass channel. If you like this video, please slam on that like button. And if you really like it, then subscribe to our channel here. And remember to leave us a comment below. And I'm going to try my hardest to reply to all the comments. Thank you guys so much. This is why I do what I do. Every single week, I come out with content that focuses on success, freedom, and living out your purpose. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.